Why does anything exist at all? Why isn't there instead just nothing, or empty space, forever? I'm going to give a classic argument for thinking that the best explanation of existence is in terms of necessary existence. First I'll summarize the argument, then I'll offer some reasons in support of its premises. My goal is to serve you, whether you are a student or an academic, or just a curious soul. I offer some classic seeds of reason, which you may develop into an orchard of understanding. Let's start with the argument. I'm going to give you a version of an argument from contingency. We may state the argument as follows. Premise 1. Something exists. Premise 2. Everything either depends on something beyond itself, or does not depend on anything beyond itself. Premise 3. Every purely contingent reality depends on something beyond itself. A purely contingent reality is anything that lacks self-existence within it. That is, there is no engine of existence inside that has necessary existence. A purely contingent reality, like an apple, lacks necessary existence throughout it. From these premises, we can derive, perhaps surprisingly, the following conclusion. Something cannot fail to exist. That is, something has necessary existence. Let us have a closer look at each premise and then consider how the conclusion may actually follow. Let's start with premise one. Something exists. Well, why think that's true? Well, you exist, right? I did meet a philosopher once who denied his own existence. He explained to me that he didn't see how persons could arise purely from particles. So there are no persons, he proposed with a straight face. But he still believed something exists. He believed in particles. To deny that anything exists is to deny that your very denial of existence exists. It's a self-defeating thought. So I think we can grant that first premise. There is at least something. Let us move on to premise two. Everything either depends on something beyond itself or doesn't depend on anything beyond itself. This principle is just an instance of the basic logical principle that A or not A. Either a thing is dependent or not. This principle is a basic truth of reason. You can know it to be true just by thinking. Let us consider next the third premise. Every purely contingent reality depends on something beyond itself. Let's call this the dependence principle. The dependence principle, it may sound abstract, but the basic idea is that contingency implies dependence. To help us think about this principle, imagine a high-tech phone that is yet to be invented. It's not an actual phone, right? There's no actual phone like this. Rather, it's a potential phone. This phone is an example of a purely contingent reality. No part of it has self-existence. That's why it doesn't already actually exist. But now we can ask, how could something that is purely contingent actually exist? According to the principle of dependence, an imaginary phone can actually exist if it has some source which it depends on. Otherwise, imaginary phones would just be able to appear from nowhere, from nothing. But that never happens, so they require a source. Here's a supporting argument for the general principle of dependence. 3.1. An imaginary phone can only be actual if it has a source of its actuality. 3.2. Any differences between an imaginary phone and any other purely contingent reality are irrelevant to the need for a source. Then, if those premises are true, we get the dependence principle. All purely contingent realities alike depend on a source. This is an argument from irrelevant differences, and it matches our experience. I used to be unsure myself of the general principle of dependence, that all purely contingent realities have a source. But then I considered over time, much time, what could possibly make a difference between something with a source and something without one? Size doesn't seem to make a difference. An imaginary phone could be any size, and it still couldn't appear from nowhere, from nothing. If there were an imaginary phone the size of a planet, that wouldn't make it any easier for that phone to snap into reality. Consider that there are infinitely many imaginary phones, phones that have yet to be invented. 
any one of them might appear inside your head right now, from nowhere. Yet none of them do. What's true of phones is true of any object we can experience. No object can make it out of the land of mere imagination all by itself. Both experience and reason testify that mere differences in size, shape, color, composition, and location are by themselves irrelevant to the ability of an imaginary thing to have actual existence without any source at all. Moreover, the principle of dependence is supported by every single scientific experiment involving cause and effect. In each case, the previously imagined results of the experiments have some source. There is therefore no scientific principle or discovery that has as much empirical confirmation as the dependence principle. Does that mean that you must accept the principle of dependence? Well, I don't think that. Reason frees you to see more, but it never forces sight on anyone. Right now, you may have various objections or questions. And it's the duty of every truth seeker to see things for themselves, rather than to merely be led by confident authority. So please don't believe anything I'm saying here. See what you can see for yourself by the light of reason. I wish to share a confession with you, a secret, just between us. After many years of thinking about this subject, I have come to think that I'm not unable to see clearly the principle of dependence. When it comes to dependence, it seems clear to me, actually clear, that a cube will not and cannot appear from nowhere inside my head in the next minute. I'm just not worried about that. Moreover, it seems equally clear that mere differences in shape, size, and location are irrelevant. As surely as I can see that prime ministers cannot be prime numbers, I think it is equally clear to me that I can see that imaginary things of any kind cannot be actual just on their own. Well, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I have a bold prediction. I predict that anyone who follows reason for long enough on this subject will eventually see that the dependence principle makes the most sense of both reason and experience. Let us take a step back and put the argument together. Imagine Bob is the totality of all things. Bob includes everything, people, particles, planets, everything. Now, either Bob is purely contingent or not. If Bob is purely contingent, then by the dependence principle, Bob has an outside source. Bob depends on something beyond Bob. But that's contradictory because there is nothing beyond Bob. By definition, Bob includes everything. So it follows that Bob is not purely contingent. Therefore, Bob includes a self-existent, a self-existent engine of existence. What that means is that Bob is either necessary itself or contains something that's necessary. And in either case, there's something necessary. And that would explain why anything exists at all rather than just nothing. Because there cannot be nothing. Because there's something that cannot not be. In my next video, I'll consider some objections to this argument from contingency as a way of further testing the argument. I'll look at some famous arguments from history, going back to Hume and Kant, as well as some more recent objections. And I would love to get your questions and objections. Feel free to send me an email or post a comment below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope the presentation serves you.